half an hour in, but um, I'm, I threw up the logic videos. I get a random comment, and I wasn't offended in any sense from a YouTuber that looked at my sort of reverse orientation solve, and the the commenter commenter said, "Oh, that wasn't a solution. That wasn't new at all, right? Because some of the pieces on the very back, once you get to the bottom piece, sort of the core pieces um, can't be." sort of reverse oriented, right? You, they have to, and obviously the center pieces maintain the orientation. He was like, well that, you failed, in a sense. The idea was, did I, did I really fail? <laughs> I don't think I did, right? Because I made my point. The point was that you can orient the cube, you can switch the pieces of each, of most, most, not all, right? You can switch it, so he was right, he or she was right. Um, you can switch the pieces of most of the cube, the location of most of them, have them where they need to be, but they aren't in the order that they're supposed to be. The idea is that's a practical way of approaching, this isn't about the logic, this isn't about writing papers. That's what people don't understand. Right? I, I do want to make you smarter, I do want you to write better papers, I do want you to be able to absolutely decimate and rip apart somebody's argument because there's a lot of power in that, trust me, I know. But more importantly, it's, it's, it's the ability to, to be okay with not being perfect. The fact that it wasn't a solution isn't a problem. I'm the first person to do it. <laughs> because that's how my mind thinks. That's how I operate in the world. So you have to be able to put yourself out there to be critiqued. You have to be able to put yourself out there to be like, this is new. This is something new. So it's... A, it's prima facie going to be open to critique, but no one did it before me, right? That's, those are the people that I help, those are the people that I want to help create, are the people who say that I'm the first to do this ever, period. It's me doing it, right? In the logic, you have to recognize that the rules are here, it's how you appropriate the rules to reason, the rules to your mind. And I'm here to tell you, as someone who is a PhD, or someone who is in a position to inform and to educate that I don't want you to be obsessed with perfection. It's not about getting it right. It's not about it being flawless and perfect. It's about you understanding and you trying until you find a method that best fits your mode of being in the world, in a sense, right? That's what this is about, really. You guys will use it because you want to get A's on your papers, but I could give a rat crap about getting an A on a paper. <laughs> so. Granted, this is a very difficult part, so I tried to make it a little less difficult. Our conclusion has to be this. We have to arrive at, remember I said the most important part of this is recognizing the relationship between the antecedent and the conclusion, but uh, the consequence. We recognize that our conclusion has to be a negation of this, right? Despite the fact that we start with A, we have to end with a denial of our antecedent. So for me, that's a very obvious thing. It's a simple thing to see that relationship, because we're going to start with one thing and we're going to deny that. That's really not that hard to describe, right? So since this paper on water conservation, since this is a paper on water conservation, it would make intuitive sense to begin with, this is just for me, other people might approach it in a different way. It would make intuitive sense to begin with, one, the conclusion first, right? And the conclusion is going to be, therefore, water is not conserved. Right? Therefore, water is not conserved. Could you have in the conclusion um, something else? Well, let's think about this. We know that there has to be a relationship between water conservation and what? I'm going to have to jump ahead a little bit. Right? Water conservation and the amount of water in the water table. I've already discussed that in the last section. Right? So we already know that there's a relationship between water conservation and the amount of water in the water table. Could this conclusion not be what I said? Therefore, water is not conserved. Of course it could be something else. That's this whole point. It's not about it being right or perfect, because each individual is going to construct the argument in their own way. Could you have had, instead of, therefore, water is not conserved, therefore, there isn't much water in the water table? Could you have selected that rather than water conservation? Absolutely. You could have, but you would have recognized that you would have to relate the idea of a lack of water in the water table as my conclusion with the lack of conservation. So 
you can begin really conceptually, and I don't want you to think that there is a proper mode of doing this because some of you will invariably say, hey, Dr. Campbell, I wouldn't have selected, therefore water isn't conserved. Could I have selected something that had to do with the denial of the existence of water in the water table? The answer is absolutely you could. It depends on how you constructed your argument before that. Right? So again, don't worry about this because while you read your paper, you're going to be like, that makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, then you, you messed up somewhere. The idea is it depends on how you construct it. So don't, it doesn't have to be like me, but I have to select something because I'm the author of this lecture series. And insofar as I'm the author of it, I have to pedagogically show you how this is done. And I've selected the conclusion as being, therefore, water is not conserved. So that's going to be the negation, right? And we know what that means in relationship to our previous section. So this claim satisfies the conclusion of modus tollens, right? It satisfies the conclusion of modus tollens, which is, um, therefore, water is not right. Therefore, water is not conserved. Okay. Where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? Therefore, water is not conserved. This claim satisfies the conclusion of modus tollens, right? Obviously, the not is this, is the negation. This, so that you see specifically, right? This symbol is the negation. And this symbol is this word, right? So if this symbol is negation and this symbol is this word, and we're saying, therefore, water is not conserved, we recognize to get rid of the negation is just A, so it would be water is conserved, right? So A is, A is water is conserved, and not A is water is not conserved. Okay, just so that it's very clear and very explicit what's going on. That, you have to be able to understand that. So, this claim satisfies the conclusion of modus tollens. Note, we are now trying to identify the parts of the argument. Right? Just like we did before, we need to recognize each part of the argument. Ask yourself about the relations established in the previous argument, which was on modus ponens. Again, the form of the argument is if A then B, not B, therefore not A. Okay, so we recognize there is a connection between water conservation and the water table. Right? There's uh, an inherent connection between water conservation and the water table. We affirmed that via the appropriation of modus ponens in the construction of our argument, and then we augmented that initial section of the argument with an appeal to authority by citing an external source, the Nebraska Environmental Quality blah blah blah, which said exactly that point. So intuitively, if water is not conserved, right, if water is not conserved, water is also not being stored in the water table. Right? You have to think about that in, in sort of that relationship. If we say that the conservation of water assists us in retaining more water in, and you know, visually, this should be simple, right? I, I shouldn't even have to write this down, but it looks something like this, right? Here's land, um, beneath the ground is water, and just imagine that you have, you know, something like this. Water comes out and goes here. The water is pulled out. Insofar as the water is pulled out and placed here, there's more water here and there's less water here. Water conservation is something that pl takes place on land. So what we're trying to say is we need to reduce the amount of water that we use, our going down is reduction, so that we can increase the amount of water, and thus this is the relationship, this is the nature of this argument, right? This is the nature of the link. Okay. Um, so there, you, you should see that, right? You have to see that. We won't really be able to progress if that sentence doesn't make sense, right? So intuitively, if water is not conserved here, we keep on pulling water from the water table, water is also not being stored, right? If we use a lot here, it's also not being stored. It's dwindling, it's dwindling, it's dwindling. Remember the appeal to authority discussed quantity. Okay, so that should be clear. Okay. So... Reverse engineering this argument, when I was a kid, I used to, um, I used to love, for many reasons, breaking stuff. I like taking things apart. 